living your truth and you can live your best life now. Good morning. It's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, we're beginning the end of season five and we're kicking it off with living in your truth, living in your reality. What happens when you decide that no longer are you going to be bound by what people say, but that you're going to be the real and authentic you? Well, that's what happened with Ayala, Fix My Life star, Mitchell Jones, Pastor Mitchell Jones. And he's here on this morning to talk with us about his life, his journey to becoming the authentic Kim. It's going to be an amazing way to end season five. So guess what? Come along on the journey with me. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. It's time to get lamped. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful. It is going to be exciting. And I am truly happy about it. Season five has been great, and I'm going to do nothing but end it with a powerful bang. Here we go. Good morning. <laughs> Just for when you, smile and laugh, cause God loves yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Good morning, welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. When we talk about life, we talk about decisions, we talk about choices, and we talk about changes. People always say, I think Vivian Green said it best, that life is like an emotional roller coaster, and sometimes you're going up and you're going down and you're dealing with things. The life of Mitchell Jones, when we think about it, when we talk about it, has been filled with highs and filled with lows. But the beautiful thing is that he's living in his truth. And one of the things that I always say is live in your truth and you can live your best life now. And Mitchell Jones is here today on the couch with us. Now, when you remember Ayanla Fix My Life, and there was the story about the gay pastors who decided that at this point in their life, they were no longer going to live in the closet, but that they wanted to come forward and live the way that they felt God designed. Many had things to say, but Mitchell took the path to living in his truth. And he's here to talk with us about the journey. Good morning, my friend. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. First of all, let me just go ahead and give you kudos because you look sharp, okay? You look amazing. I need this shoe. But what size is that? That's 11. You oh, no, that's not going to work. Listen, God said not so right there. Mitchell, talk to us because, of course, you've been on a journey and the journey has been filled with highs and filled with lows, but you're here and you're living. At this day, this moment, this place and point right now, how do you feel? Oh, wonderful. You feel wonderful? Yes. You feel free? Absolutely. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, I've, I've, I've laid my soul out mm -hmm. and I am finally, you know, I have no secrets. Wow. There's nothing hid, nothing that can be unturned that I didn't unturn. Now, of course, you were uh, um, raised in Virginia. Yes. With six brothers yes. and two sisters. Yes. What was life like at home with the family and with everyone? Never never a dull moment. Okay. Never a dull moment. Um, er earlier, we lived in a very small, uh, very small trailer mm -hmm. when we moved from New York. Mm -hmm. And I just always remember, you know, eating in shifts. That was okay. one of the things that always happened. The four of us ate first and then my older brothers would eat. And there was, you know, never a dull moment. I had 11 cousins who were just, mm -hmm down you know down the field so we'd always play our own games we didn't need any anybody else mm -hmm. to play football or basketball we had enough to do what we needed to do very close-knit family um you know you fight one you probably had to fight all <laughs> so when you were growing up so so when you're right that's it all for one and one for all we don't play so when you were growing up it was all of the family together the brothers were together you were playing football you were doing all of the things that um, they would say boys and guys are supposed to oh, do absolutely. learning to fix things and all of that stuff. Absolutely. When did it come to your mind that you realized your sexual identity or that you desired something beyond what was considered to be the typical norm of desiring a woman? Uh, well, I mean, I had, I had an understanding of it at, at five, you know, in, in, in kindergarten, in the classroom, like, you know, that's a cute girl, but that's a cute boy. But just very innocent, never feeling the need to go home and say, you know, I don't understand why I think he, she's cute and he's cute. Never, never crossed my mind. Um, it wasn't until I was 16, sitting in a Bible study, and the pastor was in Romans 1. 
And that was the very first time that I ever heard that male to male, the homosexuality was just something that was not to be done. And he just, of course he went with it. You know, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And of course that, you know, that night I, I found myself right there. Um, I, I, I have to accept that, you know, I, I took that as my truth. I'm not gonna say he forced it on me. Right. He taught it, I, I, I took it as the truth. So at the time when he was saying that, when he was in church talking, you're huh. 16 years old, you're in high school. Yeah. So, you know, of course in high school, by that time, you know, people are, I guess, getting to know themselves. I, maybe you played house along the way or something of that nature, but you, you had all of these experiences. When did it come to the place that you realized, I'm attracted to guys? Oh, I, I knew, I mean, again, like I said, you know, kindergarten definitely, but, you know, fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, it was clear to me, that, you know, that the attraction for both uh, male and female was there, definitely clear to me, um, even began to engage in some, some, you know, some type of sexual Did activity. Did you share it with anyone? Oh, Did no. you tell anyone? Didn't feel, didn't feel the need to because, you know, any any type of sexual activity was, was forbidden. You know, right. we were always told to stay away from it. And uh, so I just, I never, I never felt the need to go and say that, here's something different that was happening because I didn't see it as different. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I heard. It wasn't something that anybody talked about. You know, it wasn't even television didn't, you know, it, it wasn't talked about on television. So Cause this would have been in the, what, in the 80s? Oh my God, yeah. In the 90s? We're, we're talking, we're talking late 70s. Late 70s, point. wow. Right. And so at this point you're just living, so your brothers have no idea. You're still just seen as Mitchell. Absolutely. Boy from next door. Absolutely. When did you decide to take more of a public stance towards your sexuality? And when I say public stance, meaning that you actually begin to explore or pursue um, the same sex attraction. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I did that in my teenage years, okay. you know, but it wasn't it, public, public in the sense of I had gay friends. I would go to, I started going to gay clubs, but it wasn't, again, this wasn't anything that we talked about mm -hmm. with, with the people at church. You okay. Know? You know, musician, choir director, singer. We didn't talk. We didn't so talk you continued about on at church oh, absolutely. as normal. Absolutely. Nobody knew anything, <laughs> none the wiser, unless no. they were participating in the lifestyle. Absolutely. With you. Absolutely. How would share share that? Because what? How would something like that look? Or how would you know that they participated? Or would you always give them the opportunity to come to you? Was it still like this hidden thing? Or were you the aggressor and just like I see something I want? I'm going to pursue that. What was that like for you? you know, there were there were times when, when I just wasn't the I wasn't the one who made the made the move, made right. the first move. Mm -hmm. And then there were other times, you know, that I was like, oh, okay, I, that's very attractive to me. Let me figure out a way to to get that message across. Um, I would I would figure that out. And 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 each person, I can't tell you what was different about. It. Maybe I was a little intimidated by right. certain people, and I didn't say things to them. Mm -hmm. And then there were others that I just felt more comfortable with. Maybe I maybe I knew them longer and so it was easier for me to you know to to make it known or I just sensed that you know the vibe is coming back to coming back as well right. so it's very easy at that point to say something because you know you energy that. is energy mm -hmm. and gaydar is gaydar and it's all <laughs> the bells are all ringing so <laughs> no, when we talk, when we talk because I want to talk about the journey you follow what I'm saying so you said something that's that's real so because we have viewers out there that don't they don't get it so mother is probably sitting on the couch right now like gaydar what is gaydar she probably don't understand what gaydar is so talk to us about like in, in the in the um and I wouldn't even I just say in this culture in this society in this generation that we live now what is considered to be gaydar what what is gaydar I mean when, when I when I say gaydar I'm mm -hmm. talking about just if I if I if I pass someone or I meet someone, there there's just an energy. Just like people in church say, "Oh my God, I just sense a foul spirit." <laughs> well, well, you went that deep about it. Well, energy energy is energy. You can sense whether when somebody's happy. They say a drug addict knows a drug right. addict. Uh, a prostitute knows a prostitute. Well, a DL knows a DL, and a gay man knows a gay man. Wow. That's it's 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 energy. Wow. So, you know, people can call it what they want. We just call it gaydar. Gaydar. Know? Was there a battle in your mind? Here's my thing, because you're, you're wanting to live, you have an image to uphold. You're the minister of music and you're the, the, eventually became the pastor of the church. But at this time, you're the minister of music, so you're playing for church, you're growing up, and you hear the pastor preaching Romans 1 and it's <laughs> like, this is not supposed to happen at all, but you know what your body is telling you. You know what your body has been telling you since you've been Five. Was there ever like trauma or a battle in your mind to deal with this? Like how how can I just live or be me? Do you think do you think that situations like this are forcing us to live 
um, in a down low state? Do you think that we as a society have caused this down low movement? Oh, I do. I, I believe so. Um, you know, we have to take an individual respons responsibility, but I do mm -hmm. believe so because if you if you say something is wrong, mm -hmm. then if people are going to engage in that, mm -hmm. then they're not. The average person is not going to just come up and say, "Oh, I've been engaging in everything that you told me not to do." Right. So it's like if you say, tell a kid, you know, don't don't take don't touch anything when you go in the store. Don't touch anything. Well, when you go that way, they're mm -hmm. going to go that way and touch the very object that you, that you told, told them not, not to, to touch. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. It's the same way with anything that's deemed sin. And this was this was no different because it's not accepted. Then, by default, people will start to do it and do it. You know, do it where it's not. Hopefully, where it's not seen or where it's not known. Um, that's what happens. Do you think that people sometimes just experiment with their sexuality, or do you think that once someone has um, had a same-sex encounter? Then they're officially gay. Oh no no! I think that there are some people who um, I think that there are some people who experiment and it's like oops, tried it, don't want to do that again. And there's some who tried it and it's like oh, and they they want to do both. And then others just oh, this is all I've ever needed. Um, I think that there are people who definitely you know I think there are more guys. I mean there are guys that, that I played you know had some little as I as I told my brother a couple of weeks ago I said there are some guys I had some bump and grind experiences with mm -hmm. you know it, when I was in school that mm -hmm. I'm that I'm clear that they're they're, they're probably straight. Wow. But that's just, I think that people... It was just a moment. It was just an exploration. Okay. I mean, I mean, sexuality is, I think sexuality is normal. That's why, it's I, a, what it's is a sexuality part of to, to Mitchell? Oh, Lord. What, what, what do you <laughs> define as, as, because you know, there are some people, and I know that, of course, we're going to have um, Dr. Markeisha Miller um, come on later to talk with us um, from a psychological perspective, because I know that what you've had to deal with has been traumatic, and that it has been some scarring situations when you know your truth, but you live, you're seeing people who are constantly coming after you and like, you can't do this, you can't do that. Did you ever feel at a point that your minister of music role would have left you if you came out and said, I love Jesus, but I love men? No, at that, at that time, I had, I had, there was no part of me that was even thinking to do that. At okay. that, at that So you stage. were just living? Oh yeah, at that stage it was, you know, this is, you know, I was still under the mindset and belief that this was sin, so this just needed to be, I needed to figure out a way to get this under wraps. And even when I didn't, it wasn't nothing I was gonna talk about. You know, so that much, it wasn't until much later that I realized that, okay, that I came to an understanding for myself that, you know, God, God made me exactly the way I am and right. there's nothing wrong with me. So I began to, once I got that for myself, it was easy to, it was easy to start walking it out. When you would have the sexual relations with men, how did you feel after? Did you feel like a burden was lifted from you? Did you feel uh, like, uh, like, oh God, I feel so relieved. Like, what, what was it like for you? Because you were carrying this right. hidden demon that was plaguing you, that you wanted to just do you. Right. Just wanted to live and do you. But I'm sure in the back of your mind, you would probably hear the pastor talking, maybe your brothers oh, yeah. talking, or maybe your mom talking, or just hear some of the things that they said, not knowing that it was you who was actually living with this and dealing with this. So after a sexual encounter, did you feel like, I can go a little while longer, or I can be this facade or this image that they wanted to see? Oh yeah, you. I mean, I always felt like, you know, immediate relief, because it's like, wait a minute, because I would get to places where if I, I was, I, this is how I would say it. If I don't do this, I'm gonna lose my mind. Wow. And once that's done, then, you know, I got that fixed. But then three seconds later, you know, Lord, don't kill me. I'm on my way home. Please don't kill me. Don't let me have a car. Don't you let know, me die. Oh, don't let me die. Don't you know? let me die, Jesus. And then, then tomorrow morning, you know, it's Sunday. <laughs> right. You know, oh, Lord. And then, then he uses you the, in ways that he has not ever used you wow. before. And then you sit back and you say, well, like oh God, my how God. could you use how me? How could you use me like that after what I did after a few what, what I, I did a few hours ago? Wow. Now my explanation for that was that you know I was really totally all the way out of the way, right? Because I felt like I was so dirty and messed up that right. okay, God, if anything will happen today, you're gonna have to do it, uh -huh. um, which is you know what I think would happen for me. But yeah, I would go through that, relieved, and then the next moment, killing, my, beating myself up because you know. I've, I've, I've done the, I've committed to sin. Wow. Yeah. The journey led you to marriage and it led you to Ayala Fix My Life. Listen, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Mitchell about moving to marriage, even knowing that at this moment that you are still dealing with same sex relationships. Was it that you really wanted it or was it that you really had a change of heart and you were moving another direction? Listen, keep it right here. It's intense and it's heavy this morning, but it's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Your coffee cups are up, your pinkies are out, and you're getting lamped. <laughs> Good morning.
Good morning. Jeff and Lam <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. When you need the forecast right now, from local experts you know and trust, you need the WatchBox SkyWatch weather app. Interactive maps show you the current weather wherever you are. Will there be sun or rain in the next 60 minutes? Check the SkyWatch app's hour-by-hour -hour forecast. Plan what lies ahead with the 10-day outlook. Get severe weather alerts to keep your family safe. The free SkyWatch weather app, available for download now. Brought to you by South Carolina DNR. Good morning. We're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down. We're here with Mitchell Jones, and we're talking about life after Ayala, the journey that you've taken. And I want to thank you just for being so bold and so forthcoming um, as you talked about your journey, because I think that it's going to help a lot of people. I don't even think. I know that it's going to help a lot of people out there, because people don't walk in their truth, and they don't live in their truth. But the fact that you're sharing your story and you're talking about what life was like when you were um, growing up, up to becoming a teenager teenager up to being a young adult and that's where we're at right now you're a young adult and you are um, participating in same-sex relationships but you love God Absolutely. hands down you love God you're sold out for him but the church is telling you no you're not supposed to do this It's not supposed to happen you're reading the Bible and the Bible's telling you that you're not supposed to do this according to the way that it's interpreted in the way that um, the pastors have shared your pastor shared it with you so you're going through and you're living when did it come to Were you always so of course you are attracted to the same sex. When did you realize that you were attracted to the opposite sex? Oh, I knew that again. Back, go back to Kelly. Okay, Grant so class. you've always so, been yeah, attracted always, to females. Always. Were you dating them at the time that you were dating your? Um, I'm having relations with oh, men. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So you had the. So when you went to prom, you went with. Oh uh, yeah, I went with the, I went with a girl, but I okay. but I dropped her. I dropped her off. <laughs> <laughs> It she was did, really that way. She didn't go with me to the after prom. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. he took her home and I took her home and then. And then y'all got together. Yeah, absolutely. And it yeah. was just that type of way. It was just that type of way. Wow. So <laughs> you you were experiencing that. It just became a way of life. Um, and, and you're going through. And when did it come to you that you said, I want to, because here's the thing. I, I know you got married. I want to back up real quick. Did you have children before you got married? No. You had no children. Yeah. All right, so when did you realize that I want to become married, I want to do this thing with a woman, and I want to build the American life with a woman, children, house, daddy? Well, at, th I mean, at, 30, at 30 years old, I felt like I was at a place where I could successfully be faithful to a woman. Okay. And again, because again, from 16, hearing that this was sin, I believed that, I accepted that. Regardless of what, what made I you did. believe it though? Well, I just did. Um, I just did. I can't. I, again, I won't. I won't blame and say you know somebody forced it on me because just because somebody said it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I had to accept it. As, at that moment, I can't tell you why, but I took it as. Do you I, remember the moment where you decided to? You said no more men. I'm doing. Oh yeah, I remember. A woman, I, re I, re I remember. That. Take us to that place. I mean, I I I started that at 20, about 22, saying okay, I, I've, I've just got to break all the way from this, okay. even though I was making attempts or trying to mm -hmm. from the age of 16 at 22 uh, I remember saying okay I have got to I have got to clear myself of this I've got to get delivered from this and I'm going to do this what does that mean when you said I've got to get delivered and I'm talking I, I of course everyone knows I y'all know that I, but I'm talking for people out there who right. don't get it what does it mean to be delivered well well for me it, for me it was um, not necessarily the absence of the appetite mm -hmm. having the appetite or Having the temptation but not giving into it. Right. That's what deliverance was for me. Right. Because if you never tempt if I was never tempted by something or didn't have the desire for something, then it was no way for me to do something that I didn't desire to do. Do you think people have a concept of deliverance wrong now? Do you think that people think that deliverance means that the appetite is gone, everything is gone, you'll never have it again? There, there are some people who, who think that. I mean, and there's some people who, you know, that's that's their experience with deliverance. Mm -hmm. That was not that was not my experience. Okay. My experience was if if the appetite is here and I can manage to 
see this and not engage in it, then then that's deliverance. And which which ultimately I, I now realize was just discipline and suppression. Okay. That's all that was because I, I knew I I taught myself what to do and what not to do. Okay. Didn't go to midnight musicals. Stay away from those because <laughs> Somebody, somebody was going to dance in front of me with some tight pants on. And, wow. But you know, you know but the, here's the thing. The, the reason truth. I'm laughing because this it's is true. so the truth. Because a lot of times what people do is they it's go true. to these midnight musicals. They go to these events. Let's be real about it. We go to these events, and what you do is you sit here and you watch these people, or they shout, or they do a praise break. Or even if they don't do that, you go and text messages are being thrown while you're supposed to be ministering and giving the word so you can find out, are you going to Waffle House or IHOPs afterwards? And after you do that, I hop. I always say I hops, but you're going there <laughs> after, and after you do that, then you're going to turn around and we're going to hook up right. and 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 loose all the guilty stains. Absolutely. So you you you're dealing with that, and this is this has become your life. But you're like, no, let me stop going and putting myself in places. Right. So now you feel like I'm walking in my deliverance. Absolutely. I'm abstaining from things, and if I fall, I'm only falling, um, like just. I'm not putting myself in those situations. Absolutely. So you met Tiffany. Was Tiffany the one little woman that you dated before? Like, you're, you're going into your deliverance. You're like, I want to... Was that your first full relationship? No, I, no I'd had it. Well, as an adult, I could say one serious... One, one other relationship with a okay. female that was serious other than the teenage stuff. Have you ever told her um, um, that... Well, I'm sure she knows now, but did you ever tell her, like, hey, this is who I am or this is what I deal with? Oh, ab oh absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I made it clear that this was a part of my past. But again, when I met her, that's exactly what it was for me. It was a part of my past. You know, I've I had gone two years and there's been no engagement, no activity. So Why? I really believe that, okay, I can I can successfully be What was that two years like for you? Oh, I mean, it was great. I mean, because, again, I had, the discipline was there and it just... It was it was easy. But you never had the moments of hunger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But so again, what was that like? Because you're you're walking in your you're, you're walking in your deliverance in two years. But what was that like for you? That that those times where I'm sure you were hungry for it. Right. How did you deal with it? Did it like oh my mind, like I can't take it? Um no, it it really didn't press me that way at that point. Cause okay. I mean, I was I was so far into Knowing what you know, just handling, making the right decision. When I saw the person, they're walking by. I'm not turning. I'm not turning around. I was. It was almost. It was almost robotic. Okay. I mean, if I look back at it, it was it was pretty robotic. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you met Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. <laughs> I was actually introduced to her um, over the phone because someone had gotten into some trouble and, and, and couldn't three-way me directly. Because you're a pastor by then. Absolutely. All right. So you're pastoring a church, mm -hmm. but she wasn't a member at the church. Who? Tiffany. Oh no, no, absolutely. Okay. And yeah, so you know, I'm being introduced to her. Um, just you know, she's just the person that's three waying for me mm -hmm. and putting the phone down. Okay. And so it was just an engaging in conversation while I'm connecting with this other person who's incarcerated mm -hmm. at the time, and we're just you know engaging in just regular normal conversation mm -hmm. about life. Mm -hmm. And you know, once she 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 had gone for to Florida for a weekend, and it was gone like four days. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was kind of I had some conversation with her several days in a row, mm -hmm. you know, before or after I talked to this other person. And when she went to, to Florida and she went and stayed for those four days, I realized, oh, wait a minute, I missed talking to her. Wow. And so actually when she got back, you know, she said, you, you know, you've been blowing up my phone. Cause I left like four messages because then, you know, no text, didn't know anything right. had gone on. And I said, um, I didn't tell you something. And I realized at that point that I was interested in her. I had no, didn't know what she looked like. And so of course I went, Start praying like, you know, Lord, <laughs> Lord, keep me day by day in a pure and perfect way. Yeah, and, and, and let her be to my, to, right, my, to my liking. To your liking. And you saw her and you fell in love. Oh, oh I, absolutely. Wow. No doubt. So no you regrets. really love Tiffany? Absolutely. Wow. To this, to this day, I do. You love to her. To this day, I do. And if I if I get a million, she got she going to get 100000 at least. Wow. Yeah. Because she means that Yeah, she, she she she's the only wife I've had, the only wife I probably will ever have, and She's the mother of my kids, and there's nothing that I won't, won't do that I could possibly do for her. You said no, the only wife not. that you probably will ever have, will you consider being, um, would you consider entering into a relationship with a woman again? I don't, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say never, say never, because if you told me that you and I will be here having this conversation seven years ago, I'd have said, lose your whole Satan, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> All the church, you, you know. What I mean? Right? Yeah. This <laughs> this would not have been right. this would not have been me. No right. way. Right. Had you told me this would be me, I'd been no. Just back up and don't 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 speak that on my life. Was what, what made I you do Ayala? 
Uh, you know, I wanted to have the conversation. Okay. Um, I did. I wrote the show for someone else about something else. Uh, forgot that I wrote them when they called me, and then I was trying to remember what I wrote. And because I couldn't remember, I started talking about my kids. And so that went from the kids to where are your kids with my ex-wife, where's your ex-wife, she's in so-and-so, and why are you not together because I'm a gay man. And the church came up and the pastor came up and then it was, we've been wanting to do a show about that for five years. I have tons of gay friends, but none of them want to talk on camera. And so I said, I have plenty of pastors that want me to have this conversation behind closed doors with no tape recorders, with no cameras. Let's talk. That's how that wow. happened. I wanted to have the conversation because I, I was so tired of, of hearing dogmatic preaching about it. But wait a minute, hold on. He just, he just, he just got the people in the gate for you to preach, wow. but now you're preaching about it. He'll, hold on, he's still on the organ. Wow. <laughs> Does it bother you? Does it bother you now? Because you're out, you're living, you're, you're free. Does it bother you to know people who have actually, like, who are formerly you? Because formerly, you were preaching, teaching, and all of the word of God and stuff, but you were not an open gay man. Right. Does it bother you that they've decided not to be open, that they've decided to be the former you? Does not bother me at all, because okay. that, that's their truth, that's their journey. You, people will only live, live to what they, you know, what they know at the time, mm -hmm. or they can only, as, 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 as much courage as they have at that point is all they can live. Do you I mean, think that it's worse in the black community than it is in the Caucasian community or the Latino community? Do you think that we put a place, put put um, the black community in such a way that we don't allow people to be open and direct about who they are? I think it's a little, it's a little harsher. Okay. Um, just culturally, I think it is. And Latinos, I mean, particularly Puerto Ricans, they're just as bad as we are. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you're married, happy. Yeah. When did you realize the <laughs> appetite is back? Uh, well, you said the appetite was there all the time, yeah. but you disciplined right. and controlled. Yeah. When did you realize it was bad? Well, I mean, well, I started engaging again in 2006. You got married when? 2004. Started engaging in 2006. Mm -hmm. When did you realize Tiffany wasn't enough? Pause that thought right there. <laughs> We're going to go. Listen, listen, you're going to have to tune in next week because I need to bring Dr. Miller in and Mitchell here. But we're going to ask, we're going to ask that question. When did you realize uh, Tiffany wasn't enough? This is an amazing uh -huh. conversation, one that is so needed. I definitely invite all of you to tune in next week because we're going to continue the conversation. It's going on. Mitchell Jones is here. His bravery is amazing. And we're talking truth. We're talking about life, sexuality and God. Welcome to Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Your coffee cups are up, your pinkies are out. Have a great day. It's church time. Good morning. <laughs> Appreciate you, sir. Here we go. Everybody, everybody, get up. Everybody, everybody, get up. Come on. Motivation, inspiration, educating the revelation. Just for you, smiling out, cause God loves you. Somebody turn the lamp on.